petting the dragon is all part of it. And of course, the very, one of the key stories in the Bible is of the serpent in the Garden of Eden, which when you read that story um, in the way it's uh, portrayed, absolutely changed the way that humans um, uh, acted and saw themselves in the world. When you see the symbolic way that it's uh, talked about. And I was on a Christian um, radio station in America a few months back, and uh, you know, they said, oh no, serpents and all that. I said, well, hold on a second. Do you think that if you believe the Garden of Eden story, and again, the Garden of Eden story told in different ways using different names, you can find that all over the world as well. Same recurring theme. And uh, I said, do you really think that uh, if you believe it to be, that, that, that the, the serpent in the Garden of Eden was a snake on the ground? Did you know? Could you think it could be some, that could be symbolic of something? And uh, it's just another example of the, um, the reptilian symbolism all over the place. And when you, um, you look at the castles and the, the stately homes of these bloodlines in the aristocracy, and also in the churches as well, and they're behind them, and they were behind the building of them, um, then again you find these what we call gargoyles that have a, a reptilian feel about them. And the coats of arms of so many of these aristocratic families carry the dragon um, in various forms. Some people, and there is a lot of truth and accuracy in it, describe London as Babby London because that is became the new center of this bloodline network. And that's why this tiny, bloody country, just off the coast of Europe, had that empire that spanned the world. How could that be? Because the, that was the, 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 the center of their operations, and therefore was the center of their empire. And so appropriately, the, the very symbol of the city of London, the financial district, the original city of London, where St. Paul's Cathedral is and all the financial stuff, where they've messed around with the global financial situation as we're currently experiencing, um, the symbol is two flying reptiles holding the shield of a very significant secret society within the Illuminati web called the Knights Templar that control London. Here it is. Very appropriate, and I would suggest not without coincidence, or not coincidence. When you pass into the city of London from the main uh, urban sprawl of London and stuff, um, you pass these flying reptiles on each side of the road holding this Knights Templar shield. Um, and the district of the city of London, which controls so much of world finance, runs into what is known as the Temple in London, which is named after a Knights Templar temple. And, at the point, and, and that's the, where um, so much of the global, not just British, but the global and certainly the Commonwealth uh, law network is controlled from. At the point where those two meet, the city of London and the temple, is this flying reptile at the, uh, in the center of the road at a place called Temple Bar. And then when you, 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 you look at the recurring themes of, of, of dragons and reptilian uh, monster figures in, and, in myths and stories, they, uh, they go on and on and on. And of course, the whole basis of the Chinese culture and many of the Eastern cultures is of the dragon. And yes, the, you know, things like ley lines were symbolized as dragon lines and all the rest of it, but that's not the only explanation for it. Uh, why would the ancient emperors of China say... Um, uh, we, we, we claim to be emperor because of our descendants from the ley lines. I mean, they wouldn't do that. They said descendants from the serpent gods. That was their symbolism of, of the serpent, the gods. The word Messiah comes from Mesa, which is the fat of the Nile crocodile, which they used to use to anoint pharaohs. Christ itself means anointed one. And even the... The, the devil in the um, Bible is described as in, in reptilian terms. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. And Satan, who deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out on, into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And this theme of fallen angels, again, drops into this same theme 
of this, um, this takeover, which has been gathering pace through the centuries and now is where it is today. This is a painting by Credo Mutwa in South Africa, not far from the Kalahari Desert, which is a painting on his hut, which is symbolizing an ancient uh, African story of the Chittahuri um, and how they ate people. And um, this is Alfa Romeo, which is straight from that uh, ancient myth. I mean, why would Alfa Romeo have a bloody snake in a human? It's a bloody car. <laughs> and next to it, of course, is the red cross on the white background of the Knights Templar Secret Society. This is a, a, a home of uh, Silvio Berlusconi, who thinks uh, after a, uh, an earthquake disaster, just see it as having a weekend of camping. I mean, this man's not real, but he's leader of Italy. And when you saw that story, that's what he said, that the people in that earthquake zone should see it as, a weekend of camping. I mean, you, you, you can't make these people up. They have no empathy. Um, and again, here's that same um, theme. The fairy stories and the, and the uh, fairy tales of, of the frog turning into the prince and all these constant um, themes uh, relates to the same stuff in the ancient uh, world coming through to today. And this is, um, this is, this is, this is a book that's uh, given to some American school children. And it's about um, shape-shifting from reptilian into human. And uh, they say, I'm crazy, and they're giving, it, they're giving it to school kids. Oh, it's just a story. No, it's not. I wish it was. And this is a point, and this has got me tremendous ridicule. I don't care. I'm bothered. But shape-shifting, right? This is another recurring theme, not just in the endless people now around the world who said, yeah, I saw that, I've experienced that, um, and, uh, 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 seeing someone move from a human to a reptilian form and back again, you find this too in the ancient accounts, the shapeshifters. And not just into reptilian, but into other forms as well. And then, again, I keep saying it, this is why the first part of this presentation was so important, because without that, we really can't get a fix on some of this stuff. People say, and I understand it completely, you can't shift from a solid body to a solid body and back again. It's daft. I agree completely. You can't. But that's not what's happening. These different physical forms are energetic fields. Let's go back to that, um, that image from earlier of the, the energy field. It goes through the decoding system and becomes an apparently physical um, form that we see in our everyday life. Shape-shifting takes place in one place only, in the decoding system of the brain which again itself is a vibrational field beyond the physical. So you have um, an energy field that is human and you're decoding that into a human body. Then the reptilian level of that comes forward and becomes the dominant field and suddenly you're decoding a different energy field and then it returns and you're decoding this one again. In your decoded reality in the experienced holographic physical world, you see someone human, you see them uh, reptilian, you see them human. Did you see that? It's only going on in here. Of course, shape shifting from solid to solid to solid is impossible, but that's not what it is. How appropriate. <laughs> um, because they're holograms. All physicality is holograms. It is an energetic field, and at the end, the, the, the level of the energetic field, because it's not solid, it's movable, changeable, and then becomes changeable in the decoded reality as we observe it in the head. That's where shape shifting goes on. And again, we are perceiving through what we call visible light a tiny frequency range of um, human sight, human decoding. But just outside of this frequency range and beyond into frequencies well away from this one are endless kind of worlds and realities. 
And I say uh, further away in that sense, but actually they're all sharing the same space. You know, in this uh, space that I'm um, standing in now are all the radio and television stations broadcasting to Melbourne. I can't see them, they can't see each other because they are operating on different frequencies. And when you tune into one of those frequencies, that's what you get. And what this physical body does is to tune us through that telescope I talked about earlier.